Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing an event which is going to be of great significance if you're a PC gamer or an Xbox gamer, and that is Stack 2021, which will be hosted by Microsoft from the 21st of April. The announcements of this event are actually flying under the radar quite a lot, and in my opinion, they will be really shaping the future of both PC gaming as well as Xbox gaming for the next couple of years at least. There will be a ton of things announced at this event, but one of the more important ones on the PC side, for example, will be first demonstration and discussion of direct storage on the PC side. Obviously, this feature is already on Xbox, but it hasn't really been that detailed by Microsoft for the PC. And direct storage will be critical going forward for the PC to be able to compete against these next generation consoles. Sure, PCs have much faster GPUs, for example, the RTX 3090 is faster than, say, even the Xbox Series X. However, just being able to pull out huge, massive quantities of data from the PS5 SSD or the Xbox's SSD is going to mean that game worlds can be a lot richer and more detailed, and of course, other things like minimized loading times as well. PCs can somewhat brute force things, for example, they could go with 32 or 64 gigabytes of RAM, but even so, you can only do so much with the brute force approach, and ultimately, it doesn't really help people who can't afford to throw in 64 gigabytes of RAM, for example, into their system. So again, direct storage will be of critical significance uh, on the PC. But outside of that, there will also be the announcement for the Agility SDK for both the Xbox series of systems as well as PC. And this will allow developers to much more easily optimize their games around the new DirectX 12 features, for example, mesh shaders. In a recent video, I discussed that mesh shaders, at the moment anyway, haven't really been used in any Xbox game that has been released. They will become a thing for future Xbox games, most probably by the end of this year and certainly next year, but at the moment no released Xbox title is taking advantage of them. This new SDK though will allow developers to more easily optimize and incorporate these features. Furthermore, there will be new features added, including Shader Model 6.6. .6. We don't have a ton of detail on exactly what that is, but I'm sure you can agree that it's probably going to be of at least some interest for developers. Windows Central, who I'm quoting from by the way, and I'll also link in the video description, goes on to say that there will be a ton of announcements for Cloud, as well as Microsoft's Game Pass, where Microsoft are expected to continue to double down on their commitment to it. Either way, I'm super excited for Stack 2021, particularly with the new DirectX features. I mean, ultimately I'm a geek and I just kind of want to know cool stuff. Um, and yeah, DirectX, as well as Vulkan itself, the Vulkan API is also seeing some significant, you know, kind of shifts in uh, graphics technology. So I'm very interested to see what happens in the PC space. And direct storage, I must admit, I'm curious to see what that actually looks like, given so many gamers are still clinging to mechanical drives. Ultimately, you know, again, you can definitely... Um, kind of get around some of the limitations of, uh, you know, slower storage with just having enough RAM. But I do wonder if we're going to start to see the shift over the next couple of years where SSDs, whether that's going to be SATA-based drives or more realistic, the NVMe drives will be the requirement for uh, kind of higher detail slash texture details in games. And now we're going to turn our attention to Nintendo. There have been a lot of rumours for a Switch Pro or a Super Switch, whatever it ends up being called. But one of the more consistent rumours, of course, is this model will be 4K capable. I've leaked a ton of stuff myself on the channel, and I believe that it does use NVIDIA's DLS technology, and will have a later iteration of NVIDIA's SOC inside of it to power it. Although there is some speculation what actual architecture this will be based on. I've heard it could be based on... Volta, however, some other folks are stating that it could be even a later architecture such as Lovelace. Either way, I'm going to be very interested to see what this Switch actually brings to the table, especially now the you know original Switch hardware is starting to look very long in the tooth, especially for things like the CPU compared to the you know current next generation consoles. There are questions, of course, whether, let's say, there will be games which are only compatible with the new Switch, which personally I think is more likely at this point, or whether all games will work on both Switch models. However, the new system will have things like high-resolution graphics. 
Either way, that brings us to today's news, where there has actually been a new firmware available for the Switch, which is 12.0, and this actually references a new Switch version. Credit to Oatmeal Dome, who posted, Nintendo Switch firmware update. About my earlier tweet about uh, update 12.0.0 being able to upgrade the dock firmware. There is also this setting, is underscore CRDA underscore FW underscore update underscore supported. CRDA means cradle dock for Alua. Alua is the codename for the new model. And then Mike Haskins said, and I quote, CRDA means cradle Alua, and it's a new uh, dock for the upcoming Switch model. So basically what this means is that there's a check in the code to see which switch you have. Is it the new switch or is it the old switch? And then obviously it will set things according to that particular check. And I think at this point, it's almost certain that Nintendo will actually reveal this switch this year. I mean, it is possible it could be next year, especially with all of the shortages that we're seeing. However, personally, I think it's much more likely that the switch is going to at the very least be announced this year for a next year release, but I, I personally think that we're probably going to see it before that. But again, that's speculation on my part. And now we're going to finish the video with a rumor that Hideo Kojima is actually working with Microsoft on an undisclosed game. And this rumor was actually first posted by Jeff Grubb. I'll link, of course, his article in the video description. So this all came about because um, of a rumor that uh, Hideo Kojima was involved with a game called Abandoned. However, the developers themselves have gone on record and said that no, this is not the case. Then Jeff Grubb posted an article on this very same topic, and then in his article he went on to say that to his knowledge, Hideo Kojima was actually working on a game, or at least potentially working on a game for Microsoft. He said that he doesn't know though whether the game is going to be exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem, so I'm assuming that means PC as well as console, or whether we will see it released simultaneously or a later date for the PlayStation systems. And yeah, this basically, of course, means that Hideo Kojima could potentially be working on a brand new IP or maybe, um, you know, maybe Microsoft are going to give them one of their IPs or something like that. Maybe it's going to be some type of collaboration. Who the heck knows at this point? And yeah, uh, this is also bringing, of course, a lot of questions of what Hideo Kojima will be doing um, with Microsoft. Is it going to be Metal Gear Solid? And I personally don't think that's the case. When I first heard about Metal Gear Solid, assuming it's true, and it, at the end of the day, until I see an official announcement, I don't believe anything, but from what I understand, Hideo Kojima was not involved in Metal Gear Solid, which of course was for the PlayStation, not the Xbox. But again, I would caveat that with, unless I actually see, you know, gameplay of the damn thing working on the PlayStation 5, and not just an image or two, I'm going to take that with a massive pinch of salt. So Hideo Kojima has a huge fan base, as I'm sure you'll agree, and so him actually working alongside Microsoft is a huge PR win for Microsoft, assuming this information is true. Who knows, maybe, if it is true, we'll see some type of announcement at E3. It would be very cool to see a new IP from uh, Hideo, I must say. And yeah, also let me know in the comments below if you guys have actually ever played Snatcher. To my understanding, and I could be wrong on this, the only official English port was on the Sega CD slash Mega CD, and I never got around to playing it, and I'm kind of debating on trying it out, so let me know if it still holds up in modern day. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.